Surging cases of coronavirus in our state has some calling for mask mandates. Plus, a suspected drunk driver slams into a DPS trooper. And you know Arizona is the place to be on National Take a Hike Day. 12 and 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. And now we are live statewide. So a big shout out to all of our viewers. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, Facebook and YouTube. Hey guys, it's Tram here. Arizona's surge in COVID cases continues today. Here's a look at the latest numbers. According to the State Department of Health, we have nearly 3,000 new cases and 10 new deaths. Nearly 280,000 cases have been confirmed in our state since the start of the pandemic. As coronavirus cases surge in our state, concern is growing over COVID-19 in local schools. Arizona's education leader is now calling for more safeguards. Team 12's Jen Wall is in Phoenix bringing it down for us. Yeah, this all came down in a tweet from State Superintendent Kathy Hoffman. She basically says she wants to see the tightening of some restrictions because of COVID-19 dangers in our state. For starters, she's calling for a statewide mask mandate. Here's a look at Hoffman's tweet. Her calls to action are to help slow the spread of the coronavirus that we're experiencing right now. More asks, quarantine and test requirements for our state's seasonal residents. A limit on social gatherings. This has been a big talker just days away from Thanksgiving. A pause on winter and club sports and more. And for now, winter sports like basketball, soccer and wrestling are on hold at schools. The Arizona Interscholastic Association has recommended postponing the start of the season until January. And the AIA is scheduled to meet with state and health education officials this week. They're going to talk about COVID-19 in Arizona and the positive cases that we're seeing. Stay with 12 News for updates. For now, we're in Phoenix. Jen Wall, 12 News. Jen, thank you. The Arizona Interscholastic Association has recommended to delay all high school winter sports because of COVID-19. The AIA plans to meet with state health and education officials sometime this week to talk about postponing the season until January. After the meeting, the executive board will vote on whether or not students will play this winter. Meanwhile, the state's top leader remains quiet. It's been weeks since Governor Ducey held a news conference about the statewide coronavirus outbreak. 12 News reached out to his office for an interview, and a spokesperson told us that for now, the governor plans to communicate through social media and pre-recorded videos like the one he tweeted yesterday. Do it for your mom and grandma. Do it for our frontline health care workers. Do it for our teachers. Now, many believe the governor may be avoiding the media because of the outcome of the presidential election. However, he did release a statement saying he will respect the results after President Trump's legal challenges are finished. At the beginning of the pandemic, you may have had a hard time finding things like toilet paper and paper towels. Well, now months later, store shelves are looking bare again. Team 12's Colleen Sakura is looking at why this is happening. In Valley stores, the paper products aisle is once again looking bare and the cleaning product shelves are sparse. It was in a way expected. Arizonans starting to buy up items at the end of October, following a trend seen elsewhere in the country. Hitendra Chaturvedi, a professor of supply chain management at ASU, says the three main reasons why COVID cases going up, stocking up for winter and the election. This is a sh much shorter term the shortages that we are going to be seeing. Chaturvedi says the supply is there. It just takes time to get it back on the shelf. The companies are better prepared. They're working hard and they have more capability, but we just need to be careful that we should not hoard for the next six months. The recommendation is to buy for only a week or two instead of for months at a time. You're taking it away from the people that buy week to week. Mark Miller, president of the Arizona Food Marketing Alliance, says stores here will start to take action to keep product on the shelf. You're going to start to see more limitations of one or two per purchase so that we can make sure that we have enough for all the customers that come out. The bottom line. Just don't panic. Colleen Sikora, 12 News. You are at the grocery store. We want to remind you that this is the 28th year for the Big Turkey Tuesday donation drive to help feed families in need in our community. You can donate $15 by texting turkey to 474747. Go to 12news.com slash turkey Tuesday or make a donation at any register at Bash's, AJ's or Food City. 
Well, it may be fall, but it really feels like summer, at least this week. Here's Crystal with your forecast for one one. Twelve News weather watcher Greg just couldn't resist. He grabbed the skimmer and got ready for a bonus pool day. I mean, when 59% of the year thus far has been spent at 90 degrees or hotter, of course the pool is still going to be your go to because we're at it again today, potentially adding to our 90 degree tally, which is already locked in at a whopping 190 days. The record in any given year is 196 days that was set in 1989. We've already matched the record 90 degree tally for November at seven. And the record latest 90 so far, well, that was yesterday and today we could push that date one day further. Phoenix set to crack 90 this afternoon. So is Tucson and creeping up on that mark in Lake Havasu. We have a trifecta of record breakers and tires today. Still on record watch tomorrow in the deserts and on Thursday. So it's going to be all eyes on that mercury. For our mountain neighborhoods, temperatures are trending 10 to 15 degrees above average. But the big ticket item for you is going to be those winds speeding up out of the southwest. They're going to hit their highest on Wednesday and Thursday, gusting up to 40 miles an hour. We're going to refill on that sunshine each and every day. High pressure is calling the shots through the end of the work week. All right, Crystal, thank you. So, you know, it's a little toasty here in the valley, but Friday is opening day at Snow Bowl. So before you hit the road for the high country, are you prepared? Team 12's Matt Uris joins us from ADOT with some winter driving tips you should know before you go. That's right, as you know, here in Arizona, you don't have to travel too far to find yourself on much tougher road conditions to make sure we're all safe before we head out to see family or hit the slopes this week. And we're joined now by Doug Nick of ADOT. First and foremost, what should drivers be aware of before they head north? Well, plan ahead. Think of where you're going, have your vehicle ready, know the forecast for where you're going. Obviously, conditions in the valley are going to be likely very different than wherever you're going if there's going to be snow. And then in your vehicle, have uh, some things if you do get in trouble, have some water, maybe some food, blankets, a fully charged mobile device. So just be prepared and, and use common sense. And Doug says, above all, if the weather conditions aren't safe, if you're not comfortable, make sure you go ahead and stay home. I want to transition now into this piece of machinery behind me, the snow plow. Pretty impressive. I do want to talk about the camera. That's new there. Tell us why that's important. Right. You can see the camera there in the in the cab, and that's a new technology as of this year. It's a live feed that we can go to our district offices so that the snow plows are sending uh, information, obviously visual information of what they're doing, and our folks in the in the offices can see what these various plows are doing, what the conditions are like, and and use them most efficiently, deploy them where they're best needed, and, and really see what it's like. It's just a great tool to, to give us information to help make the roads that much safer. Doug, thank you very much for your time. I'm Matt Yuris in Phoenix here at ADOT for 12 News. Matt, thank you. Hashtag most clicked. Here are the stories piquing everyone's interest right now. A suspected drunk driver is accused of crashing into a DPS trooper. Troopers were directing traffic near State Route 85 and I-10 in Buckeye when the driver rammed into a patrol car. Both were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. A man is dead and another is facing manslaughter charges after street racing in Scottsdale. Police believe the two drivers were racing down Scottsdale Road near Indian Bend yesterday, going more than 100 miles an hour. Police say Nicholas Meath died when his car slammed into a pillar near a hotel. The driver of the other car, Cameron Groom, was taken into custody. Maricopa County plans to certify its election results later this week. It comes despite a last minute request by three Republican congressmen to recount all two million ballots. A spokesperson for the county says, quote, the evidence overwhelmingly shows the election was accurate. Time now for in other news, the stories that you may see trending on social media today. Happy National Take a Hike Day. Arizona, as you know, has so many great trails. Team 12's Vanessa Ramirez has the top five hiking spots, according to an Arizonan who's hiked almost all of them. It's National Hiking Day, and what better way to celebrate than exploring Arizona's beautiful trails? Whether you're a beginner or an avid hiker, State 48 has over 1,300 trails to choose from. With that many trails, where do you even start? 
It's just researching and learning what hikes are for you. We caught up with Tyler Barks, who according to Visit Arizona, has one of the best Instagram accounts that'll make you want to explore Arizona. Here are his top five hikes. We're at Superstition Mountains in Apache Junction, which Tyler says is his all-time favorite hiking spot in Arizona. There's different levels, and that's what I also like. Um, I've taken my grandmother out here all the way to basically scaling up and going to siphon draw on the top of the mountain. And so it's really family-oriented. Next up, the Grand Canyon. Both state parks or national parks and Havasupai because I really consider them to be two very different hikes. If you're doing Havasupai, Havasupai is the easiest out of all of them. Anything in the national parks are a little more difficult, especially going the first mile or two in. It's just straight down, straight up. If you're looking for a shorter hike with the kids, Papago is the way to go. There's not many cactus out there. You can really get your kids adapted into it. Uh, it's great for older people just looking to get out. Leave the kids with a babysitter for this one, as it's for the more advanced hiker. Lava River Cave is about a 30 minute drive out of Flagstaff and it's about a mile in and it's a lava tube that ran back 750,000 years ago, something like that. And you can actually go down and hike all the way to the end of it. And last but not least, Sedona, which is covered in trails. But if you have time just for one. My all time favorite hike in Sedona is Cathedral Rock. It's usually not too busy. Uh, it's really anybody can do it. And there you have it, the top five best hikes in Arizona to get you started. From Superstition Mountains, Vanessa Ramirez, 12 News. And I absolutely love Superstition Mountains. I took the kiddos there. We went camping at Lost Dutchman State Park and then hiked up there beautiful. Folks, that is your 12 at 12. The facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes, no commercial.